bring it back into uh, FEMAP and I've got my results set in here and I'm going to turn off my geometry so I don't have to look at it too much and if I look at it I can see I put a pressure on it and it deflects downward which is pretty much what you'd expect from a uniform pressure. Now something I didn't mention before, I'm going to turn off the deformed shape. I have the uh, thickness turned on over here, the thickness with cross section and you can look at the plies here in this area to sort of show the fact that in the corner I only had two plies but I've got three plies in this area and if I move over to the center here a little more I can see it jumps up where there's actually four plies loaded there. At the moment I've done them so they're all centered about the neutral axis. With composites you have the option of offsetting them so that they're all stacked on top of each other the way they might be in a molded composite. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for this quick one, I'm just going to go ahead with this. Um, now the, the fun part on composites come when I want to do my contour plot and I go look at my deformed and contour data and historically what you get is you get stresses and strains and there's no shortage of data on that. I have composite maximum normal stresses, shears, but now I have things like out of plane shears. The shear XZ is an out of plane shear in the X direction. YZ is an out of plane in the Y direction. Um, then you have things like the max ply failure index and this will be the maximum failure index calculated for a ply. You have things like a maximum bond failure index. We put in a bond strength and so the bond failure index is calculated based on the bond strength. We have the minimum failure index, the minimum bond failure index. Then we have the max failure index that's the maximum of the bond and the ply failure index. And a very useful one, the max failure index ply, which tells you what ply that maximum failure index happened in. Uh, then you have principles and von Mises. And there's another one down here called composite status. And the composite status is zero if uh, a ply is failed or a ply is okay, i.e. the failure index is less than one, and the status is one, which means it's failed if the failure index is above one. And that gets to be useful in multiple layups. These terms here, element vectors 6054 down through 6117, are all composite calculations all based on the all of the plies. So in our case we have four plies in some places, three and two, and this will pick out the maximum or the min based on all those plies. And the composite status basically gives you the percentage of plies that have failed. So if it's 100 it means all the plies have failed. If it's zero then none of the plies have failed. So well, let's just start with the composite status and look at that and do a little contour of that. And it tells you that in the worst case on our model it looks like 33 percent of the plies have failed. Now something else you'll notice on this is that it's doing this averaging uh, where an element here and an element here and an element here and an element here are averaged together to come up with a stress. Well since the failure index applies to an element not really to the node that isn't really a useful piece of information when you plot composite results. So what I like to do is go over here into the post options up here and choose the contour options and change it over to elemental data which is what Nashtran is calculating and I turn off the averaging. And the result of that is is it tells me that all of these elements out here that are blue have no elements that have failed, no plies that have failed, whereas these eight elements here and these eight elements here actually have some plies that have indicated failure. Now I can look at that by going back and plotting things like the max ply failure index down here, composite max ply, uh, let's plot the max failure index. And if I plot the max failure index, sure enough you can see that some of these are above one and one indicates a failure and in fact in particular the eight elements that were flagged as having failed plies actually have some plies that have a failure index. Now if I want to know what ply that is I can go back into here in my deformed and contour data and if I choose the 
max failure index ply, this will tell me what ply the failure is occurring in. And this tells me that I have four plies that it occurs <laughs> in the top one, I think, because they're all blue. And so they only, so it's the top ply that's showing the failure in all of these. It's the top ply. I guess that would make sense because when I push down on this plate, the bottom plies are in tension and the top plies are in compression. And we saw from our material data that this particular material is very weak in compression. So yes, it makes sense that the top ply would be the one where the failures are occurring and where the max failure indices are occurring because that's where the failure would occur in compression. Okay. I am going to wrap up this. Oh, the one other thing that I'd like to show you is that we set up these global plies. And let's go back to something else here. Normally, when I went in to plot my deformed and contour data, in addition to all the maximum values, I have values for composite ply 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are all for 4. These are 3. So I can go in and plot various things like the normal stress, the composite ply 1, normal 1, which is ply 1, normal stress. And I can plot that, and it shows me that. Now, in the normal thing, the ply 1 is the bottom ply. And as I go from ply 1 up to ply 4, when I get to ply 4 and plot this, what you'll see is the results all around here are 0 because there's no ply 4. There's no local ply 4. These corner areas only have two plies. The middle areas have three plies. But the center is the only one who has four. Now, normally when I look at something like this, I laid this up with a strip that went one way, a strip that went the other way, and the top. So what I'd really like to look at is based on that global ply. Now, fortunately, there's a really good way to do that. Up here under the POISTA options, there's something called laminate options. And if I go to my laminate options, I can choose that I want to plot a global ply value. And let's pick, for instance, the x area. And this will plot the normal one in global ply 2. And so it's only plotting them. I'm not sure what that is there over there. And I can go and do that again for global ply 3, which is the y area. And I can do it for global ply 4, which is the top plate. And that'll be everything. And I can do it for the bottom plate as well. So this allows me to look at my results based on the global ply that they're part of, as opposed to going and doing these on the local plies uh, within the element. So with that, let me wrap up that little demo.